about now, I'm Jay. C-Dub on the beat. Back against the wall, CL20's knocking ready. IGI's tripping, validated, shoot ready. Hey, yo, what's good with everybody, man? I hope everybody's having a productive day, feeling blessed, and like I always say, it's one life, one chance. When they got one chance to do this right, let's get it done. So with that being said, man, I got a lot of questions asked by my subscribers lately, so... Y'all giving me good content, but they asked me about this one. I said, all right, I guess I could talk about it. So with that being said, hit that subscribe button, hit that like. Always leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Check the links in the description for my Apple and Spotify music. Go ahead and run my streams up. And you can check out my playlist section on my YouTube channel and check out my music right there. Thank you guys for you guys' time. Most important, thank you guys for you guys' support. Now, this is in regards to Tony A, the wizard from Rhodium Radio. I really don't watch them that much, too much, but I, I I catch things here and there. I mean, I brought in my horizon, so to speak, but everybody was asking me about the, the Chicano documentary, the Chicano rap one. I'm looking forward to that one, to be honest with you, even though I wasn't the one to put a donation in it, but it's only because, honestly, I don't know, I have no history of Chicano rap. I listen to Mexican rappers, Chicano rappers, but I don't, I, back in the day, I wasn't really listening too much like that, which I should have. You know, I think everybody needs to have a great sense of pride that, you know, Chicanismo and rappers, Mexicanos, Chicanos, they're starting to develop a voice. They're starting to infiltrate the hip hop industry and create music for the gente, for the people, which is cool. And the thing what I disagree with and watching all the things that I needed to watch was this. Like, I got to see firsthand how much money you can make on YouTube. You know, it was only like three or four months before I got demonetized. I was making 10, 11,000. That's when I stopped working and was like, you know what? I'm going to invest as much as I can into this and blow up and save a big bag and buy a house somewhere in the cuts and with a white picket fence and live like the rich white folks. But still, I know you can accumulate a lot of money off YouTube. So to me, ask for one, asking for donations. I mean, you you persuaded the people to believe that they were going to be a part of something. And think about it. They wanted $15,000 for production equipment. And they reached 20,000 in less than a week. So you got to remember, that's a lot of people that wanted to see this done. That's a lot of people that wanted to be part of this documentary or docuseries, whichever one it was. Because in the beginning, it was a documentary. Then later on, when all the problems came up, as now it's a docuseries, he wanted to make multiple because he couldn't put 30 years of Chicano rap into one documentary. Whatever the case may be, you promoted it a couple years ago. Now, all the controversy is coming up. But you're asking people to donate out of their money, their hard-earned money. They're not on YouTube making 10, 20,000, 30,000. Look at five, uh, 1090 Jake, 50,000 a month off YouTube. But yet their hard-earned money wants to see this done. They want an accomplishment for the people. They want to see Chicano rap. They want everybody to gain their recognition that haven't got it for so long because obviously the hip hop culture is dominated by the black culture. So they wanted, to, they wanted to see the people in a better limelight, a voice, a powerful voice, and they were willing to provide that voice and donating. But to me, it was like a pimp move. I mean, they sold them, they sold them a dream. They sold the people a dream. $20,000, and then you come on public and tell me the excuses is, uh, well, COVID is understandable. But either way, that's, that's been uplifted for a few years. And then he, the one thing that bothered me when he said, he's like, I ain't obligated to tell you guys nothing. I was like, first of all, yes, you are obligated because you took the people's money. You didn't put your own money into it. The people came together, the subscribers, the audience, the people that wanted to see this documentary, put their money in to get you everything you need to accomplish that goal. So obviously they deserve more obligation than you're providing because they lost out on money. You did it. And then he came up with an excuse like I gave my right hand man a password and all this and this and that and then something happened with an old lady and she leaked his address and he got scared. Well, what? Well, oh my God, bro. Boo-hoo. Boo-hoo. I've had my address leaked before. So what? What are you going to do with it? Are you going to send me anthrax? Are you going to send me death letters? Are you going to send me a pipe bomb or pull up, man? I mean, you have the address. Do something with it. Don't do something with it. I mean, egg my house. So what? I'll just clean it off with a water hose. Big deal. Now, I understand that um, maybe some people didn't want it to be done. You know, there was a part of me, I was like, man, there was probably Chicanos, Mexicanos that didn't want certain, like, you know, they were saying it was going to be based in L.A., probably dudes from San Diego were like, well, if you ain't going to count us in or dudes from Northern California, like, you ain't going to count us in, then, you know, we, we can mess this whole thing up and just stop it from happening. I don't know what happened behind the scenes. 
But I don't really care that if you provide an excuse that on my right hand man took when, when all this was happening and he wanted to pull out of the situation, he took half the equipment and half the footage. I find that hard to believe on the basis that what are you going to do with half the footage? What is it to do if it's not done? What's he going to publish? What's he going to do with that? Obviously, if you put money to the equipment, which from what I was watching specifically said the donations paid for the equipment. So why would he take the equipment if the donations, the GoFundMe paid for the equipment to get the production done? I didn't hear anything about like, oh, we only have we use this amount of money, all the don uh, the donations. So but we had to put in more because we needed more money. We needed more equipment. I didn't hear that part. I heard the donations bought the equipment. So why would he take half? Just to sell it on eBay? What is he on? A tweaker mission or what? He's out there just clucking stuff. Man, I'm, I got a $1,500 camera, bro. I'll give it to you for seven. I'll give it to you for five, man. Hook it up, man. For five, man. You can take pictures of your ugly kids. You know, I, didn't, I don't hear that. I don't hear that going on at all. So to me, it looks like whatever was going on with them and his crew, the disagreements, the agreements, the disputes that caused them to separate. I don't believe the story for one bit. That doesn't matter. But what matters is I don't care how it turned out. The simple fact is you use people's money that will help. Pretty much their money is the one funding the documentary. You're just going around doing the interviews because of your, your talk show, your podcast. You know these people. You can get them on camera, show them the fame, get them the fame and recognition that they deserve You know, for Chicano rap. You have to do that regardless, even if it turns out bad. You have to, t that's why I don't like, I mean, no offense to anybody that does it, but I don't put my cash app. I did it like once or twice. Some people asked me and I pulled away. I don't do it. I don't ask for no money, even though I'm not, I'm, I'm not monetized. I don't need nothing for my audience, man. My audience will get me where I need to be in the future. But for now, I'm doing this on my own free will. I'm, I'm doing everything. All my merch that I pay for and I mail out is free. I give it out to people. Besides the merch that I just recently created, everything that I give out, all the torta shirts, all the, the, the mugs, the keychains that I got going on for everybody, I give it away and I pay for everything myself. I don't ask nobody for a dollar. I don't charge nobody for a dollar. This man did was accumulate a lot of funds from hardworking people that wanted to accomplish something. And the best you could do is like, man, if you donate, you'll be, your, your name will be in the credit. Well, how long is the credit list gonna be? I ain't gonna see my name. I don't see my name in bold print like that big. If I put in for it and it gets dumb and I want my name across the screen with flames on it, you know what I mean? It's a little Elmo dancing or me a picture of me like this. You know, something, give me something big, but just a list full of names. I mean, these are all the people that I help fund it. it. Doesn't matter. What I see is an individual giving a lot of excuses, illogical excuses, but he's trying to convince you that they're logical. For whatever took place, you still have an obligation to your people. And what made matters worse is when people started questioning him, I just watched the video and he was like, I ain't obligated to tell you what happened. I ain't obligated to keep you updated on what's going on. You can go check this website. No, you took the people's money and now it's looking like you just robbed the people for the money. And they've been waiting since what, 2018, 2019 for this documentary? It's 2023. Oh my God. But I understand, uh, the, but I understand the pandemic kind of messed things up, but still. That's why I think, you know, you've seen a lot of YouTubers, you've seen a lot of podcasts, you've even seen movie stars and DJs. Every, everybody has a little scam that they can pull off and get away with. If you're a YouTuber and you're on there posting the cash app and all that, bro, if you're making money off YouTube from the advertisement, then it's your job, your job to put out more content, put out creative content, intriguing content to make people watch it so your videos can blow up. That way you can get the money. Because every thousand views is depending on how viral you've been going and how consistent you've been, could be from four to ten dollars. I was getting paid seven dollars before I got demonetized. So that's seven dollars per thousand of views. Bam, twenty thousand views. I might get close to a hundred dollars. Okay, let me do twenty videos a month in hopes that I get twenty thousand views. I Man, I just accumulated a lot of money. I think if somebody was gonna put that documentary together, they should have did it out of their own money. They make enough money. No excuses. We're the ones that are representing the culture. We're the ones representing these YouTubes. We're the ones representing our audience and what they want. We're putting out content what they want to watch. You know, it's a supply and demand thing. You know, the audience wants it. The audience is going to come back for it. I got to keep giving it to you guys. Plain and simple. So it would be my obligation if I took money from you and it's not working out, I'm going to keep you updated as much as I can. Hey, and I don't care about my right hand, man. He did me dirty anyways. I'm going to air him out. Hey, man, this fool ran. 
him and his girl were, were, were boxing in the front yard and then they started beating each other up with the cameras and the sticks and everything broke, but I'm going to pay for the rest. Don't even trip. But there was a video where he said it's, um, it's, it's halfway edited. It's almost done. But now the footage is missing. But that's nobody's fault but you, your crew, your right-hand man for trusting them with your password. You owe it to the people to provide that documentary and give the people what they not only paid for, but what they asked for personally. But I think no YouTuber should take any subscriber's money. If they decide to do a super chat, membership, provide in such fashion because they love and support you, let them do that. But to set up a GoFundMe and not follow through with it, to me, it's just another scam. Just like I've been seeing a lot of YouTubers scamming a lot of people. I've seen a lot of TikTokers scamming a lot of people. I see a lot of scams in social media. And I sit back and be like, bro, that's why I don't ask nobody for nothing. You know, people came through from with the baby registry because they wanted to give something to my son. That was cool, but that was the last of it. I'll never do that again. I never want nothing from nobody. And if I ever do something on behalf of the people, on behalf of my audience and my YouTubers and my subscribers, I'm coming out of my own pocket in hopes that I make money back. If I get it back, I get it back. I don't, you know, you got to spend money to make money, but you got to take that risk. If I don't make it back, but what does it matter? I'll go make 30 more videos, gain the same bag back, go pay my taxes on it later, but I gave you guys something that you wanted. That's the mentality I see with a lot of YouTubers and a lot of uh, TikTokers and like influencers, Instagram models, all oh, subscribe to me so you can see more of me. For real? I already follow you and I already like your pictures and I already comment and you don't comment back. Now you want me to subscribe. Now I got to pay $9.99 to see you do the same thing that you were already posting on Instagram, but you're going to do it a little bit more. Like, bro, like, why is everything a come up? I'm coming up off a social media platform and I'm coming up off advertisers who want to advertise their product and pay me. So everything shouldn't be a come up. I shouldn't look at everybody and be like, man, how can I get a dollar from him, a dollar from him, a dollar from him, a dollar from him, and then I'll y'all spend a third of it and give them what they want, something generic, and I keep the money to myself. Man, we just live in a greedy society. A greed so I don't believe them. And that's just my personal opinion. I don't care what he says. I don't care what anybody else thinks. My subscriber asked me to talk about it. That's just my personal opinion. And then I read a comment. Some dude was like, bro, you guys were donators. You guys are the ones donating. You guys shouldn't have donated if you didn't like the outcome. No, they donated with the promise on the premise that they were going to fund a documentary that they wanted to be a part of, that they wanted to see. They should either get their money back since nothing's turning out the way it was supposed to be. But you can't blame and criticize the donators, the people that provided donations because this dude didn't follow through on his end. It's like saying, hey, man, chalk it up, bro. Chalk up your money, bro. You lost it. Oh, well, nah, man, they deserve to get their money back. We got to stop taking advantage of people. And I see that time and time again with a lot of people. And that's why I said in my last video, man, we got to start showing the audience, the subscribers, the members, wh whoever you are, however you identify yourself to these particular channels that you follow and watch, we got to start respecting them more. Because I guarantee you, he can't, he can't post another GoFundMe and be like, look, man, I need another 18000 20000 And this time for sure, I'll get it done. People ain't going to do that. Like you're gonna lose trust and you're gonna lose respect for the people that are actually there willing to help, that wanna help, that wanna be a part of something, who can't be on camera, who, who don't have the talent to be on camera, who don't have the money to fund it, but yet they were willing to help, 50 bucks here, 100 bucks there, $20,000 in a week, and it's been over three, four years, and then you're coming up on, and then you come up on, uh, on YouTube talking about, I ain't obligated to tell you what's going on or where we're at, just go check out the website, and that's it. Bro, that to me, like I said, my personal opinion, my subscriber told me to talk about it, just thought it was a scam. To me, it's just a scam. If, you, if, it's, if it's that important or if it's not going to work out, you can see that it's not going to work out. Start trying to get people a lot of hope and you're over here reaching as far as you can. Either, you, either, you, either it's done or give the money back to the people because the people deserve their money back. So with that being said, like I always say, it's one live, one chance. When they got one chance to do this right, let's get it done. Peace.